Hey guys, this is Alachia, and this is my review for Kazia Minus One. The film follows a former kamikaze pilot, Koichi Shikishima, as he grapples with grief and guilt about his performance during the war. And along the way, he meets a woman, Noriko Ishii, who is caring for an orphan baby, Akiko. And as they start to try to form a life together, Shikishima just can't quite move on because he's constantly being terrorized by so much grief and fear manifested in Gosewa. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm not going to say, oh my God, this is like the best film ever, but for $15 million? Oh my God, this is the best freaking film ever for $15 million. I don't think you could get more bang for your buck. Wow. Just wow. Hollywood should be taking freaking notes. Takashi Yamazaki wrote this film and then directed it. So he, he, you know, he had a script. He actually had a story to tell. He actually wrote an actual story that is well developed. The character is well developed. You actually go on a journey with your main character, Shikishima. And then Godzilla is brought to life, uh, you know, through the visual effects uh, team by at the Shirogimi Studios that uh, Takeshami supervised. And he, he, he saw the whole thing and brought it into fruition with the budget of $15 million. Oh my gosh. I just, I just think if, if he had had the budget that Wish had or the Marvels, this would be the biggest blockbuster of the freaking year. Hands down. What absolutely sells this film is the perfect balance between tension and release. That to me makes a successful monsters film. Takeshi said he was heavily inspired by the original 1954 film. However, I think most American audiences will notice the inspiration he took from Steven Spielberg's Jaws. That perfect buildup of tension and then the release. It, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful formula for monster films where you have this buildup where you know it's coming. You just, it's the dread. The dread just absolutely starts to permeate. The fear starts to creep up into your veins and you know it's coming. And then just when you think that you can't take it anymore, bam, and then the score swells. And it is the perfect score for this film. The score is by Naoki Saito. And it absolutely encapsulates that moment, that fear as Godzilla is about to emerge. And it's like the swelling of a massive tidal wave. Wah, wah, da, it just builds up, builds up. And it's like, you know, this this force of nature that's coming over and it's inevitable. It's unavoidable. And you're filled with absolute dread and terror and sadness. He added notes of sadness to this where you you have this, you know, the the you know, as much as there's you have the anxiety and the tension and the action that's coming, you also have the personal heart that's added to it as well, where that notes of sadness make this film far more personal than most Godzilla type films where you just feel for what's coming and it just penetrates right into your heart. It's so well done. I highly recommend seeing this on the big screen just for the sound quality alone. The music score, the sound effects, it's just the roar, the atomic blast. It just vibrates and you feel it. You feel like you're right there going, oh, fuck. You know? So I just think that um, this was so well done in terms of execution. Now, I do want to warn people that this is not your typical American Godzilla type film where it is a wall to wall CGI fest with just a bunch of roar and smash and just, you know, you know, nonstop. This is 
more of your typical Japanese kaiju type film, where 60% of the film is actually the story of your protagonist. And in this case, the majority of the film is the exploration of what the metaphor of Godzilla is. And you're spending a lot of time with Shikishima as he is grappling with the despair and the fear uh, that he has been feeling since the end of World War II and the massive amount of grief and guilt he has to resolve and that whole personal conflict is the true monster of the story. And it reminded me a lot of Train to Busan where when people recommended that film to me, I was like, oh, it's just, it's gonna be a zombie film. And it was a zombie film on a train. But my God, one of the things that surprised me so much about that film was how much heart there was. There was just times, you know, where I was like, why is there so much dust in this theater? You know, like, they, it, it has the feels. There is a personal element that is added to these stories that I think make them stand out and, and actually make you have more of a connection to them than your typical uh, kaiju type film or zombie film where when the destruction happens you have such a personal connection to the people involved and to their community and what that community means to them that when the devastation is happening you're not just like oh generic you know city being destroyed or generic people being squished or squashed right you you're actually terrorized because you're like oh he had a connection to those people and so you had a connection to those people and so when you're seeing them get devastated you're like oh it's just like it's really it's really heartfelt and then the supporting cast was just absolutely amazing in this where very few films these days seem to capture the camaraderie of what it is to have other people support you and to be able to rely on and have that to guide you through life and and through your conflicts in life and i think that that was a huge message message for takashi as he wrote this kind of rewrote this uh during the pandemic and how much he felt like there was this inability for us to solely rely on the authority the you know the government to help us and that it's actually through the community and other people that we survived takashi really took the time to create characters for Shikishima to truly bond with, uh, like his partner, uh, Oishi, and the captain of the ship, Akitsu, and uh, the engineer, Nora. These characters are fully realized, and that adds to that tension you feel when you realize that all of these lives are at stake, and you don't feel like any of them are fodder. None of these are red shirts. You're rooting for all of them. The only complaint I have about this film, and this may be a cultural thing, is that I felt like they spent way too much time, uh, probably about 25 minutes too long, on Shikishima's personal journey, where there was a point where I just felt like, I get it, I already get it, but they keep driving at home that note that sour dire note and i found it kind of hard to watch at times but you know like i said uh, there is this really good balance between that uh personal drama that is playing out and then the looming obviously uh threat of godzilla and just as i'm kind of like almost a little too sour on the character here comes the manifestation of his conflict in physical form i'm like okay I think I just prefer characters that are a little less emo and far more subtle in their portrayal of grief. Uh, and that I think is probably a cultural thing. The other thing is that I didn't like the art direction for Godzilla. Uh, I thought that the curved eyes uh, very much harkened back to the 194 original Godzilla where it felt like, you know, it was a model, that it was a kind of clayma claymation type um, version of Godzilla, which I felt looked silly, but in execution, Godzilla was always terrifying. So no matter the fact that I didn't really like the model they used for Godzilla, the effect and the terror of him being on screen 
overrid that. Overall, I really, really enjoyed Godzilla, and I definitely recommend checking it out in the theaters if you can, uh, because I think it's really worth the experience of seeing how good direction and good editing can be done to showcase fear and terror without, you know, an insane budget. It's just, it's just watching good filmmaking. Is it a perfect film? No. Is it a perfect film for $15 million? Yes. Is it the best action film of this year? Yes. I'm going to give Godzilla minus one a B minus. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you'd like to watch more, you can click right here, or right here to watch more now. Until next time, see you on the flip side. <laughs>